Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. I really enjoyed that conversation with Jeff Duncan. As I often say, we're so lucky to have access to Jeff, an award-winning uh, journalist and um, you know uh, evaluator of of all things all things sports, especially the Saints. Uh, really, really lucky to have access to Jeff. He and I worked together when I was the president of NOLA Media Group and publisher of the Times Picayune and NOLA.com. And, um, and it's been great to be, carry so many great relationships from the, that part of my life into this world that I'm in today. It's been uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. And Jeff's the, the ultimate insider. He understands what's happening. And uh, it's just fun to, fun to visit with him. I hope you enjoy those insights as well as we barrel toward training camp for the Saints and then into uh, preseason and the season. It'll all, it'll all be over, as he pointed out, before we even know it. Hey, listen, uh, yesterday I had the opportunity to visit with uh, Mayor uh, Billy Knight and Paige uh, Roberts. Mayor Knight, of course, from Moss Point, and, and Paige Roberts, the executive director of the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, two people I so admire. Um, mayor Knight ran for mayor of, of Moss Point a number of times, and uh, now we're now we're really kind of getting some insights into. I wish he might have been elected the first time he tried, <laughs> because he still may be there as the mayor. But here's a guy in his 80s that continues to reinvent himself. I've said that he's reinvented himself a thousand times. Uh, certainly not a thousand times, but man, this is a guy who decided a long, long time ago he was not going to ride off into the sunset on a horse. He was always going to try to find a way to give back. And that, you know, that's this notion of a mayor giving back is it fits just about every single mayor we have along the coast right now. That they, they have reached a level of success in their lives, and now they're trying to figure out in this moment in their lives how do they how do they give something back. And so when you had that 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 kind of drive and that kind of intention and the goals to to want to give back. It's not about ego. You don't want your 15 minutes of fame. It's not about, you know, trying to be somebody you're not. It's literally about taking the wisdom and the years of experience and the humbleness and finding a way to use that leadership to help your city. And what Mayor Knight has done from economic development to restoring faith in government to, you know, d developing his recreation plan, all those things that he's up to has had uh, has had tremendous success already and he's you know he's thinking he you know he says that he's planting trees that he may never see the shade shade from but he understands that you have to take actions now to to reap the benefits 5 10 15 uh, years down the road uh, as it relates to the uh, tornado that we talked about yesterday Paige Roberts from the Jackson County Chamber it's been amazing to watch Paige and the way that she's come in to help the mayor and and really focus on this recovery effort and this like long hours and the number of other volunteers that have come into this. And Paige at one point was an executive with the Red Cross that understands a lot about recovery, but just frankly in her heart, just like in the mayor's heart, there's a, there's a, a need to want to give when there are needs in the community. And after a tornado, that's certainly the case. Um, during the conversation that we also talked about T. McCovey, the president and CEO of the United Way of Jackson and George Counties, about the role that he and the United Way will play in terms of this long-term recovery. And so with that said, I thought I would immediately invite T. to join me today to uh, to share from his perspective how things are going. And we'll get into that before we get we get too far into this. But before we get any further, let me just welcome T. back to uh, the Ricky Matthews Show. How you doing, T.? Doing well, Ricky. Thanks for having me, man. Good, good. Hey, listen, I, I'm always inspired by your social media posts and by your leadership. And so I want to thank you for it. For people who are watching this on YouTube or Facebook or, or Super Talk TV, they can see your smile. But what you know, it's a very genuine smile that's, that's self-motivated and driven to, to want to give back to the community. So let, why don't we do this? Let's remind people sort of what your organization's all about, and then we'll move on to talk about more about the uh, the efforts in, in Moss Point. Yes. Um, you know, as you said, Ricky, I'm the president and CEO of United Way for Jackson, George, and now Greene Counties. So we've taken over Greene County. And, um, you know, United Way, we're the largest human services nonprofit in the world. Uh, there are over 1,800 United Ways. And last month we had our international conference 
in Houston, where you had United Ways from all over the world. And, and, um, and, and one cool thing about that, I got a chance to meet the CEO of the United Way for Hungary. And when Putin invaded Ukraine, a lot of the refugees went into Hungary and Romania uh, and Poland. And so our United Way, we actually sent a donation to the United Way over in Hungary. So, but to be able to meet her face to face and, and I pulled up my emails and, and reminded her who I was and, and she thanked me. And so, yeah, United Way, we're on the front lines of, of you know, multiple issues and uh, multiple fronts uh, of the unmet needs in our community. Um, and you mentioned the tornado in, in Moss Point. Uh, we're galvanizing the community now and, and, um, and I'm calling it the community verse. And so we're bringing the community verse together because, you know, it, it could be Ocean Springs next or Pascagoula or Bay St. Louis or Biloxi. So, uh, yes, we've definitely put some things in place to uh, sustain us for, for years to come. Well, it's uh, interesting, you know, we'll, we'll come to Moss Point next, but it's interesting that you talked about your your meeting and understanding what's going on in United Ways around the world. And I've had the opportunity through um, a family member to get to know a an independent missionary who is in um, who is in Ukraine. She's been there now for I think for sixteen or seventeen years, and she visits with me on the show regularly uh, from from Ukraine. And um, uh, it's just it's just incredible. She's introduced to me some, some families, and in one case, family members. The, the 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 father stayed here. The family was sent to Poland. Another case, the father stayed here, and the family was sent to uh, Croatia. Mm-hmm. But the but the reality is, what I've learned from Laurie is that I don't care what country you're from. You know, most people are caring people. They want to help others, and and, the, and it's almost like they're being hit by this this hurricane called Russia that unfortunately doesn't pass. It just stays on top of them, and they have to deal with that. But watching the what's in the heart and soul of people of Ukraine reminds me of Mississippi and the and the work that we do here after a, a difficult situation. But. Um, you know, resiliency comes in different languages, but the, what, what what expresses itself from the heart and the soul is very similar, no matter what country you're in. Isn't that true? Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So you get in a situation where Moss Point, we talked about this yesterday, but Moss Point gets hit by this tornado. It may not, we don't know yet. We're hoping that they're able, that this weather pattern, that because the way this works, to get a, to get a, a disaster declaration, it's based on an event. So you can't take a tornado from this week and a tornado from last week that hit Mississippi and put them together and have a, a disaster declaration. But if there was a line of bad weather, a tornado spins off here, some wind damage there, it's possible that the state might be able to put some cities together and proclaim those as a single event. So we're hoping there's some ways around this so that we can get the disaster declaration. And it will, it will, it will help in two ways. It will help in many ways, but two very prominent ways is that the city and the county will get reimbursements. But also the individuals that were impacted, some 60 families that were impacted by this will have the ability to get individual and very personalized assistance. Mm-hmm. And that's really important as well. I, I, I said to you before the show started, and I said yesterday to you that that the uh, the, the, the federal de- de- declaration process for emergencies, to me, is flawed because I don't care if you have two homes destroyed or 600 homes destroyed. If you're looking at a single person, the impact is the same. And sure. so we've got to, it seems to me, we've got to make some adjustments to that. Uh, it's unfortunate. But if whether we get the, 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 the disaster declaration or not, the families are going to have needs, aren't they? Aren't they absolutely, uh, to, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, Ricky, my, my um, solution to FEMA with this is to break the declarations down by population size. So you may have a med- a small, medium, and large. You can keep it just that simple based on population. So a small uh, community, um, you know, threshold will be, you know, different than a medium size and large to get a declaration. Because right now, you know, we're we're you're talking wildfires in California and and you know areas that are that are 
you know, a lot more populated than ours here. So, but we will get judged the same way. They use the same criteria for say, if an incident happened in New York city that happens here in Moss Point, Mississippi. So my suggestion to FEMA is to, 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 you know, do it in a, a small by population size, small, medium, and large based on, uh, on that. And I think we'll have a, a quicker declaration process versus, you know, um, one that they just put everybody in a pot like gumbo and, <laughs> and come out with a declaration. I'm going to invite FEMA to, to join me on my show and talk a little bit more about that. It has to be the ha we can't be the only ones with this observation. Small right, small right. towns across America have been hit by floods and tornadoes and all kinds of challenges. Hey, when we come back on the other side, we'll continue our, our conversation with T. McCovey from the United Way of Jackson, George, and Greene Counties, and uh, we'll talk about specifically what's going to happen in the aftermath of, Miss, uh, of the Moss Point tornado as it relates to United Way. We'll see you right after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. I have T. McCovey, who is the CEO and president of United Way of Jackson, George, and Greene County, and we're talking very specifically about Moss Point. So, you know, what is the, let's, let's start with this in the, in the short time we have left together. When, when, a, when a disaster like this happens in your community, T, how, how does the work of the United Way sort of kick in? Well, first thing we do, uh, Ricky, is we galvanize the resources and uh, bring all of those resources to the table. And I'm sure Mayor Knight and Paige uh, alluded to this the other day. You know, we finally, we got the green light from the Jackson County Board of Supervisors to establish a long-term recovery committee. And so Monday, the committee will meet for the first time and then we'll start the process of uh, looking at damage and, and looking at detailed reports uh, in order to, to help the citizens of Moss Point. So, I mean, United Way, whether we have a disaster or not, we're always in 911 mode. You know, no one calls United Way and say, hey, T, you're available for lunch tomorrow or whatever. You know, it's always, you know, someone calling or stopping by with an issue. So we're pretty much problem solvers in the community. Um, and one of the things that we do too, Ricky, we just try to make sure that the community is rowing in the same direction from business and industry to nonprofits, uh, churches, um, you know, and, and I've been working at the Disaster Recovery Center uh, you know, from picking up water to dropping stuff off to, you know, um, uh, being a resource connector with people needing resources uh, to different things in the community. Um, and unfortunately, Ricky, you know, one of the things about a disaster brings out the best in people and the worst in people. You know, we've had, you know, the, the Tuesday after the disaster, we had a gentleman come by and said that, um, you know, he needed a, a, a food voucher. And, and I heard the counselor up front say, okay, did you have any roof damage? Any, 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 you know, he said, no, the house is intact. The tornado just came in and, and ripped out all my food. And she said, so it opened the refrigerator, pulled out all of the food in the refrigerator, pulled out all the food in the cupboards and, and, and <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I'm like, you know, so obviously um, that's one of the things that, that our long-term recovery committee will do. It'll mitigate a lot of the fraud that we see that happens after a disaster. Yeah, T, one of the things that Paige and I talked about yesterday, and, and the mayor and I as, as well, is that what 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 a disaster does is it reveals the vulnerabilities in a community. It reveals the need for resiliency. So, mm -hmm. so many people live on the edge anyway, and then the tornado comes through and suddenly you see, you know, underinsured, not insured, people were a paycheck away, and a lot of elderly who, you know, were living on fixed incomes. It reveals very significantly why we need to be talking about resiliency every single day, even when there's not a tornado. That's so important. Um, what it reveals about the needs in Moss Point are very significant, aren't they? Absolutely. And, and, you know, when one of the jobs that United Way has is, um, you know, not only, you know, our three primary focus areas are education, income stability, and health. 
And we just believe that we raise those levels in our community, it will lower the unemployment rate. It will lower the poverty rate. It will lower the crime rate. Uh, so that's something that we keep our finger, fingers on the pulse of the different gaps that we have in the community. Um, you know, and as United Way, we're the fiscal agent for the funds that's coming in uh, for this uh, relief effort. Uh, Rebuild Moss Point is, uh, you can go to our Facebook page or our United Way uh, website and click on donation and you know, drop down box, Rebuild Moss Point. Um, and we're getting thousands of dollars in to, to help this effort. Um, and I've often said, you know, Rick, it may be your community next. And, and so we just want to make sure that we're all, and you mentioned that, that servant's heart and, and, and looking out for our neighbors and, um, yeah. 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 Paige mentioned yesterday that you, you that still uh, they have needs for for people with strong backs and a chainsaw. Sure. And people have the ability yeah. to put blue tarps on roofs. That's still a very significant need. So if you know anyone who has a strong back and a and a chainsaw and knows how to put a blue tarp on a roof, they could use your help. Uh, you could reach out to to Paige at the recovery center in Moss Point. You could reach out to United Way. That give you some Absolutely. directions on on what to do. Money. We need money. Um, she's Paige pointed out we got plenty of water. And don't use this as an opportunity to clean out your your closet. We got we got plenty of uh, of clothing. The, right. the issue now is really about how to get people back on their feet and money is really important. So again, you can go to the United Way. Of, of Jackson, Georgia, and Greene County's website and click on Rebuild Moss Point, correct, uh, T? Hit the donation button, and it's a drop-down box, and you'll see Rebuild Moss Point. Yes, uh, and that's a that's a great that's a great way to to uh, to contribute back. But you know, it's one of the one of the things we learned after Katrina. People, when they get back on their feet, they they kind of have a tendency to find their new normal and move forward. And and you, it's just a normal human thing to do. You're trying to just you know, move your life forward. But in this case, uh, the path is so indiscriminate. You know, you, you, one neighbor gets destroyed, the next neighbor doesn't get touched. That's what one of the points that Paige made yesterday is so indiscriminate. Uh, but let's not forget our neighbors in Moss Point. As, as uh, Mayor Knight pointed out, what happens in Moss Point is important to people in Gupport and the rest of this coast yes. and the same, vice versa. What happens in Gupport is important to Moss Point. We are one coast and we've got to help each other uh, bring it all back together again. So anyway, T, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you, friend. Thank you for your leadership. Oh, you're welcome, Ricky. Thanks for having me. This has been T. McCovey from the uh, United Way of Jackson, Georgia, and Greene County. Just added Greene County. Uh, have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.